Hi guys, it's Anon once again, welcome back. Well, this is the first of a series of videos that I'll make about a certain war and I'll use my Lego models to explain how the war actually happened. So our video starts on good old Argentina. Don't cry for me, Argentina. Well, we'll see about that, Madonna. In 1946, Argentina was ruled by Juan Perón, the traditional South American president slash dictator. I can really go for some kind of military dictator, like uh, Juan Perón. When he disappeared, you, you stayed disappeared. Plus his wife was Madonna. As you might have guessed, Madonna portrays Evita Perón on the musical film Evita, the most famous wife of Perón. The country at the time was the richest in South America, and the economy was growing 8% per year. However, when Perón died, he was replaced by his third wife, Isabel Perón, which in turn lost power shortly after on the military coup due to increasing violence and extensive economic problems. A military junta took over the control of the country, combining the leaders of the three main armed forces, army, air force and navy. They selected General Videla to rule the country and the country went through a very, very difficult period. Because looking at him, you just know that this man is not a very friendly dude. The right-wing junta that he led made a series of really bad decisions in terms of the economy and the country's inflation skyrocketed. They also started the famous Dirty War, the Sumerian arrest and execution of any left-wing and communist members inside the country. This and a series of other early events led to a considerable drop of popularity of the junta and that was a problem. So if you are a South American ruler and everyone starts complaining and you just don't know what else you can do, there's a very important book that might help you. Lesson number one. In case of trouble, blame someone else and start a war with them. Argentina at the time had a tremendous military power and they decided to start a war against their weaker neighbors, in this case, Chile. Videl really needed this war to distract everyone from their miseries, but the war, luckily, never happened. The Beagle conflict, no, not that Beagle, this Beagle, the name of the never fought war was prevented at the last minute by Pope John Paul II. Many people complain that religions foment wars, but in this case, thousands of lives were spared. Shortly after this, Videl transferred his power to Lieutenant General Viola who itself was ousted on a coup by yet another general, this time was General Leopoldo Galtieri. After Galtieri took over the power, the Dutch war became even worse and the economy continued to fail tremendously. This led to a series of anti-junta demonstrations and his popularity went to the lowest level possible. Senor President, Senor President, the streets are full of rebels and their mothers, what should we do? Well, we can always try to start another war. We can't. We are in Argentina. We are surrounded by Catholic nations. Every time that we start a war, the Pope will stop the war again. So, we just need to start a war against a non-Catholic nation then. What about the United Kingdom? That's brilliant! Wait, what? That makes no goddamn sense. <clears throat> Let's see. So England, England, United Kingdom, Great Britain, uh, yeah, here it is, and Argentina, mm, down here, so around 8,000 miles, um, why would they do it? Just 500 kilometers away from Argentina, there's a small group of islands. These islands were probably discovered by the Spanish or French discoverers during the 17th century, but the British were the first to document and reclaim them. The islands changed hands frequently, being occupied by the British, the Spanish, the French, the Proto-Argentinians, and even the Americans at some point. Finally, the British expelled all previous owners and settled there permanently. The British called the islands the Falklands, and to them the climate felt just like home. You know, raining all the time, just lovely. 
the British built a naval base there, and during the First and Second World War, a series of naval battles happened close by, namely the Battle of the Falkland Islands in 1914, where the German Admiral von Spee died, and the Battle of River Plate in 1939, where the Admiral Graf Spee pocket battleship was scuttled. Ironic. Argentina always complained about the British presence there. Every time that the government had problems, they used the British occupation of the islands as a scapegoat to distract everyone. The Malvinas, as the Argentinians called them, even got their own rallying cry. Las Malvinas son Argentinas, which can be translated as the Malvinas are Argentinians. In 1982, the British economy, and the European economies as well, were in a very delicate situation, and they started to cut expenses, namely on the military. Some overseas territories, like the Falklands, were left almost defenseless, and with only a small token force there. Gautieri got the impression that if he invaded the Malvinas, the British wouldn't complain. The British were giving away overseas territories every day without any problems. The settlers at the islands weren't even considered British citizens. There were even some talks between the British to deliver the islands to Argentina during the 70s. But uh, this was stopped when the opinion of the islands were taken in consideration. You don't say. The Argentinian Navy leader, Admiral Naya, insisted with Gautieri to launch an invasion and plans were prepared. On 19 March, a group of Argentinians landed on South Georgia Islands and hoisted their flag there. The British patrol vessel HMS Endurance left the Falklands to confirm the situation. On 2nd of April, Gautieri sent an invasion fleet against the islands, known as Operation Rosario. The Argentinian fleet included the aircraft carrier 25 de Mayo, equipped with the A4 Skyhawk attack planes. And ironically, they sent two British design warships. Argentina bought one Type 42 missile guided destroyer, like this one, named Hercules, and they also designed and built in Argentina another one, the Santissima Trinidad, with the support from England. To distinguish them, the British 42s had a vertical and an horizontal stripe on the funnel. The Argentinians had these ears, HMS Sheffield also had them, and carried Exocet anti-ship missiles. The Argentinian main target was Government House, here at Port Stanley, the capital of the Falcon Islands, where Governor Rex Hunt was. The British had 100 armed men defending the islands against 500 Argentinian commando soldiers, supported by LBTP-7s, amphibious APCs, like this one. They simply overwhelmed the British defenders at the islands, and uh, the British claimed that they destroyed one LBTP-7 with a rocket launcher, like this one, uh, Carl Gustav. There's not enough uh, evidence to support that claim. Although both sides fired their guns, only one Argentinian died during the invasion. The Argentinians received orders to evade killing the British soldiers, if possible. The British forces surrendered and were returned to England via Uruguay. On Buenos Aires, the news were extremely well received, even by the people who opposed Galtieri politically. For the Argentinians, that was their moment. They had finally achieved their goal. The Malvinas were finally Argentinian. So, back in London, the news fell like a bomb. How dare the Argentinians invade the sovereign territory of the Falkland Islands? If England at the time was ruled by a man like uh, Witt Chamberlain, the man who pretty much offered Hitler half of Europe without firing a shot, it's highly possible that Argentina would uh, only suffer a few sanctions and that was it. But uh, the United Kingdom at the time wasn't ruled by a man, but by a woman and her nickname showed her massive will to recover the islands. I speak, of course, of the godmother of all conservative right-wing parties, Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Lady, and she will do everything she could to expel the Argentinians. So I hope you guys liked this video, thank you so much for watching. My next videos will introduce a lot more Lego, but I really need to explain the intricate political situation that led to this undeclared war. I'm pretty sure that I forgot some uh, important events. If I did, please comment below and don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel and follow my Flickr webpage for my LEGO models. Thank you and see you next time!